Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? I don't have any, no. Okay. No. Um, I think probably Evan and I and yourself should probably give a quick update on the Holcomb House. And oh, yes. Yeah. Um, any other items? No. Okay. The vaccination rate in Johnson. I would speak, I'd be happy to speak to that. Okay, vaccination rate. Any others? Seeing none. Are we prepared to approve the meeting minutes of May 17th? What's the board's pleasure? So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You guys have it. Rosemary, you got the floor. Let's turn that again. Okay. We sent out the warrants and the big item on the warrants was the uh, payment of taxes to the school that will pay them in full for the year. And do you want to go through the budget status report now or is that later in the um, agenda? Was that as part of the uh, capital equipment? discussion uh, there was we had talked about wanting to have the latest status report yeah. um you I, could I think just, it's up to the board if you want it now or or as part of that other why don't you just give a real brief overview of how we look and then if we have questions when we get to the capital equipment okay um with the orders that you are going to sign tonight the general department is about 90 percent spent so that leaves about three to four weeks left for the general department. And the major thing that's missing out of the general department is um, bringing income from the reserve funds. Okay. And the highway department is looking to be about 84% spent a budget. If you um, do the contribution to the capital equipment fund and outstanding loans and tonight's orders. Okay. So I think overall we're in okay shape. Good. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Um, it looks like we were, I think the last time we met, uh, we were down in taxes that have come in, the revenue has was low. Uh, it looks like we've made up for that and then some. Um, am I reading that correctly? Are you looking at the current tax line? Yes. Remember the voters voted an extra $30,000 in the budget for the bridge project. That is included in that figure. And that's oh. taxes built, not taxes paid. I gotcha. Okay. Are we still behind in taxes paid? We're about 168,000 right now. We had a couple mm -hmm. of big payers pay a couple weeks uh, last week. That's total delinquent? Uh, this, this year. Current year? Yes. Okay. And how does that compare to previous years at this time? It's up. It's By, up. I don't know. Still probably up. 10, yeah, probably about $30,000. Okay. I guess that's the best point. It's still up. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I don't think so. Anybody got any further questions for Rosemary? Okay, 
I think I saw Paul Warden here, probably for the Eric? Planning Commission. Eric, I uh, apologize. Yes, go um, ahead, Nat. We need to sign the warrants. Are we going to go in individually, or are we going to assign it to you? Uh, yeah, that's up to the board. What's the board's pleasure? I'm, I am going to need you to sign a deed. So I am going to need individual members to come in at least. Okay. I guess that answers members. that question. So we'll have to, everyone will have to go in to sign the deed anyhow. So you might as well sign the orders. Okay. Uh, with that, Paul, you got the floor. Alrighty, thanks, Eric. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I will uh, do my best to make this brief since uh, your meetings are already too long as it is. Um, Planning Commission has had two meetings since I've been chair and uh, I've got a couple things underway. First off is sort of some housekeeping uh, organizational stuff. We got the terms sorted out and you may have noticed that they're now posted the members and each of the terms when they expire on the town website so that that's uh, clear it up in a matter of public record. Um, we discovered that uh, nobody seems to know where the bylaws for the Planning Commission are, so we've drafted a set, <clears throat> which we'll be reviewing at our meeting uh, on Wednesday of this week. Our current task before us is uh, still the Class 4 roads. So at this upcoming meeting, we'll be reviewing the red line draft that the Select Board presented to us uh, a meeting ago. To that end, we've uh, created a class four um, assessment matrix to go out and look at the class four rows and grade them according to the, the criteria that were in Brian's letter, uh, which we had not done previously. And also in our meeting on Wednesday, we will be uh, meeting with Rob Moore of LCPC to review uh, hydrologically connected class four roads and how that all ties together with the class four road uh, issue that we're dealing with here in the town. Once we've done that, we'll then submit a revised uh, draft policy to the select board for their consideration. Um, that's kind of where the class four road part sits. Uh, next up after that is looking at uh, water and sewer line extensions and trying to draft a policy or criteria for the select board to use as a decision matrix for when you get requests or where to expand to. Um, the idea is to create a framework so you don't have to deal with them on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we expect to start that discussion in our July meeting. And uh, so if anybody has thoughts as to how that might best go forward, I'd certainly welcome them, welcome uh, attendance at the meeting or input anytime prior to that. Uh, that said, that's it, short and sweet. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Paul. Any board members got questions for Paul? Nice report. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. So your next yeah. meeting is, Paul, your next meeting is the 14th. The second, it's a second Wednesday, correct? Uh, second Wednesday. So it's uh, the ninth. Day after tomorrow. Oh, sorry, your July meeting. Sorry. <laughs> You're talking about the decision matrix. Oh, yes, in July. July. In, in, in July, that's correct. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? No, thank you, Paul. And uh, look forward to. Uh, you're welcome. You guys thank you out. all. Have a good night. Okay. Me too. I guess. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Brian, we can start jumping into the capital equipment reserve fund. All right. So I've got, see, I sent along some, a couple different scenarios that I had investigated on the capital equipment reserve fund. Um, primarily looking at uh, our tandems. Um, we did get some information on leasing for the greater. Um, leasing for the greater is significantly more money than 
purchasing the grader. I'm not sure what's going on with that, um, but the lease payments for the grader are between uh, 67 and $69,000 per year. And we would only be leasing it. Uh, we could lease to buy at that rate, uh, but that's still more money than what it costs to buy out. Like. Um, no uh, theory so, as to why. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Nortrax has been a little hard to get a hold of. Uh, so I'll circle back with them and see if they can explain it to me. Like that's more than uh, our trade-in value. So it's not just that they didn't factor the trade-in for the lease price. Uh, but yeah, as of right now, the lease price for the greater is significantly more money for less. Uh, so that's not really part of our analysis right now. What was the lease period that you used for the greater? Five years. Uh, they had a couple options for some other periods, mm -hmm. uh, but keeping with the general guidance of keeping our loans to five years or less, uh, that's what I. Okay. I had checked it out. Um, but yeah, the, the total amount paid was. Uh, about eighty thousand dollars more than purchase for that period. So there's something going on there. I'm not sure what it is, but as a, for right now, until we figure that out, uh, the lease option for the greater doesn't check out. Okay. It's a little tougher when it comes. It's a little harder to see when it comes to uh, the tandems. We got some uh, data from, uh, I don't remember the name of the, the agency, but we got some data about uh, lease options for our, our tandem trucks. Um, so if we completed our current round and then switched over to uh, leases after we finished the all the trucks that were have either just replaced or you know, the, we've got the truck next year that we've already signed a purchase and sale, so we can't really switch that one out. Um, but once we complete all of those and switch over to lease options, uh, there's that's something wor worth considering. Um, I'd sent an email to the board earlier today that I, I wanted to, when we're talking about this and really trying to compare leasing to purchasing for the tandems, we really want to look at um, this, those last three years, kind of outside of the period where we're, we still have some trucks in the existing purchase plan. When we do that, the, you know, they are a little bit harder to, it, it's a little bit harder to say which is going to be a, a better use of our funds. Um, I can share my screen. We've all got in the packet, but it might be helpful to see at the same time. So the two that I really want to focus on is our all purchase, which is our, our existing purchase plan. That's purchasing a truck with a five-year lease, or excuse me, a five-year loan and keeping the truck for eight years before replacement. That gets us, there's a couple of ways of looking at it. We can look at the total appropriations and the total cost or at the uh, average annual appropriation and cost. This is running with all updated numbers for our most current estimates for the greater uh, and the uh, and the tandems and the uh, replacement for the 4300. And I forget the model designation for the truck we're replacing the 4300 with. But 
all of our, our current replacement values. That brings us to a, a total appropriation over the next 11 years uh, being short by about $16,000. You know, a lot of this is costs are rising faster than we had anticipated. So you know, you're saying we're going to be $16,000 short anticipated estimate if we uh, continued with the program we currently have? Yes. Okay. Over the next, you know, 11 plus years. Okay. So it's not we're not underfunded next year or the year after uh, this fund under this scheme actually is positive uh, throughout the whole projection, but it is not, it, it, it's losing money on balance that the, the, the cost of equipment is rising faster than our contributions to the fund. So when will we run out, what does the trend show? The trend is, um, I think that we're, we would run out closer to um, 20 years out, but it's a little hard. It's a little hard for me to say because we have, if we look at this right now, we can look at a couple low years in uh, FY26 and FY28. Um, it happens when things get stacked up, when we have a lot of expenses occurring at, at the same time that we hit our, our lowest points. So the fund as a whole will maintain an average positive balance for much longer than this, but it will run out of money. Uh, and, and it could hit a, a low point and a, a negative balance uh, in between them. So, a, so I, I would say, you know, I, I wouldn't have a lot of confidence in it farther than uh, 14, 15 years out. But at, at 20 years out, that would be a very modest increase at this end that would... Uh, you know, cumulatively put us in the, the black. Yeah, I think that we could make it a pretty modest increase now uh, to continue, you know, to, to bring it up over, over the course. You know, we're looking at, you know, th this is uh, a yearly annual expense of, or an average annual expense of closer to uh, Fifteen hundred or, or fourteen hundred dollars. Average over how many years? Eleven years. How many years do we cycle equipment through? Eight. Yes. Yes. So we should probably take an eight-year average and bump it up a little bit because costs are going to rise; they're not going to fall. Um, that way, we are making sure we're contributing the, you know, the more appropriate amount. Well, the only thing that's on an eight-year schedule is the tandems. Tandems are on an eight-year. The um, let's see, uh, the pickup and the uh, the smaller truck, the the forty-three hundred and its replacement, are on five years. And the greater and loader were twelve years, I believe, right? I think it was 12, might even been 15. Let me take a quick look here. Greater is 12. The loader is. What year is the loader? Doesn't say on the sheet. No, it doesn't. Uh, the loader. Let's see, the loader was FY18. Looks like the loader's 10 years. 10 years. So, I mean, I was just throwing out an eight-year 
I mean, I don't, I'm not stuck on eight years, by the way. I was just throwing out an eight year because it should, we need to make sure whatever the average is, is picking up whatever our highest spends are going to be over time. And my guess is if the greater and the loader are 12 and 15 years, my guess is they're gonna be our highest spend. Is that an appropriate assumption? Certainly yes. the greater. Yeah, okay. So if, we're gonna, so if the greater is on a 12 year, we should probably make sure we're using a 12 year average to figure out what our costs should be. And we should probably bump it up. I mean, I would think like, I don't know, 7%, somewhere between five and 10% to contribute to the fund because, you know, 12 years from now, things aren't gonna cost what they cost today for sure. Yep. And the current, if I'm reading this correct, our current year, uh, well, no, it's the, the budget we just had passed, the contribution would be 137,000. And we've uh, already- The budget we, yes, the budget we passed would be 137,000. And then, you know, we're bumping it up at some- uh, Or- Six, $7,000 a year, something in there. No, that sorry, way. it's 130,000. Uh, we're FY22. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right, yeah. Okay, so we're 130,000 and we're bumping it up about 7,000-ish a year? Uh, exactly 7,000. Okay, and that's the current? Yeah. Okay. Question on the excavator, that's blank both on the old, the current yeah, plan. We, we don't have an excavator that was a wish list item that, uh, I had worked with on Brian or with Brian a couple times and never made the finances make sense on it. Okay. For so the amount we use an excavator, it's cheaper for us to rent one. Uh, there's, we're not realistically going to be buying. One. Okay. So that's just kind of residual noise in there that line yeah. 32. Okay. So how's the board want to approach this? Uh, we, well, we've seen the current, but now do we want to look at some of the different scenarios and, you know, with what those scenarios would drive? So I'd like to present the leasing scenario. Okay. Why don't you go ahead? So if we switch over to leasing tandems. And which page, I, I had troubles following all these uh, uh, different options. Uh, is, are you on page five now? Uh, it should be, uh, let's see, what is it in your packet? Uh, yeah, it is page five in the packet. Okay. So page five is leasing 10 tandems. Yes. Okay. So, if we're leasing the tandems, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And I tried to send an email explaining this a little bit. Um, this picks up several years under our current system, and it picks up a couple of years under the new purchasing plan, assuming the purchasing plan was leasing. So we'd finish out our current uh, buy options and then turn them into leases. If we go that route, what we're looking at is a lower a lower uh, average for eleven years, but that's a little bit misleading because it's kind of covering two systems. If we look at this instead as a, um, over either the last three years of this projection or projecting this farther out into the future, then what we're starting to see is that these are a lot closer. Uh, that this is not saving that much more money over the uh, the old system, and it's not really saving any money at all uh, under the as opposed to the current system, because we would then 
we then wouldn't have any equity and we'd be making constant payments on um on our three tandems and you know the greater also if we went that way uh they we would need between 40 about forty thousand dollars a year savings in repair costs uh to make that make sense and we don't have that much in repair costs so it, it's not likely to, to, for it to work out for us to switch over to leasing for the tandems. But that would leasing mean that we're, we're not, we're no longer keeping the break years at that point, I'm guessing. No, uh, we would be, if we're, if we're moving to a strictly leasing option, we are only keeping them for five years. Yeah. Uh, and then we're returning them. The good thing is that they'd still be under warranty, so we would never... The, the entire life of the vehicle would be under warranty. Our repair costs would bottom out. We'd, we'd pay very little for repairs. So um, we're, we would see zero or virtually no savings, but something we would lose is a uh, opportunity. If we option of being able to delay a, a, a trade for a year because of financial reasons or whatever. Correct. Okay. So there is not, it doesn't sound like there's a, an upside to this. I don't think so. Okay. I think that moving all tandems to leases, um, I don't think it saves us a lot of money. It saves us in kind of a nebulous way in that all of our trucks are going to be well kept, uh, well maintained and turned over quickly. We'll have a lot less downtime. Um, but I don't think that we're, I think that we're still getting some benefits from the faster replacement schedule of replacing them every eight years instead of every 12 years. Uh, I think that that's a pretty good balance for us in terms of reliability and cost. Is there any board members that think we should explore this option? What does you think about it? Uh, I'll sit, let's see if he was available. Um, if he's here, I don't want to speak for him. Yeah. Um, I feel like the, I still personally feel like eight years is a long time to keep a tandem. Um, but the only advantage I see to leasing would be to turn them over quicker. Um, you know, you're, the guys take really good care of these trucks. Um, it shows when you have uh, one person assigned to his own vehicle, he's responsible for it. I think that um, turning them over every five years is a good period of time. Um, we're less apt to have to put tires on them, uh, which is a significant expense. Uh, you know, eight hundred, uh, six, seven hundred dollars a piece times ten for every truck. Um, you know, there's a lot of little fringe benefits to shortening the life even more. Um, I haven't been here long enough to see how much better things are on an eight year turnaround. Uh, I'm currently experiencing the last of our 12 or 14 year old truck problems. So I'll be glad when that's over with. Um, but I'm, I'm for shortening the life. Uh, cycle to five years. Yeah. I also think it'd be worth exploring shortening the life cycle, but maybe not to five years. You know, I think six or seven years would still get us an improvement over what we're currently doing, but. Well, was it, we aren't really seeing the benefit of the switching over to eight years yet. Uh, we, we definitely had problems in 12. We have not lived through a couple of cycles yet to see if the eight year would pay out for us. No. We have not yet replaced any truck that we bought under the eight year yeah. purchase plan. How many do we ha currently have under the eight? Under the eight, uh, after this year, I think we'll have all of them 
All of them? Okay. So three. So we're still talking six to eight years before we'll really have a good feel for if this really was a, a good bang for the buck or if we're going to have to go to another, you know, take another bite out of the apple to a five or six year. Yep. Uh, the, let's see, in FY24, we'll have had the, uh, our oldest dump truck, our oldest 7600 for the, the better part of uh, six years. That one was bought not at the beginning of the year, so we have part of the payment. It's a five-year term, but it falls across financial years. We didn't pick it up on you know, July 1st. We picked it up, uh, I think, in September, if I remember correctly. But we picked it up partway through the year. Um, so that's why it, its schedule falls out a little bit. But we'll have had that for uh, six years, and that'll be kind of our real experience for what are these like after, um, like what, what's, the, what's their end of life really like? We saw that there was a dramatic fall off in their end of life after 10 years. You know, that years 10, 11, and 12, we were, you know, we were making truck payments on them just to keep them on the road. Yep. You know, we were spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 easily. Um, that didn't look like that was going to be the case uh, in terms of just raw repairs when we look at the data that we had for the 12-year the replacements. That said, it's a, it is still hard to quantify the other incidentals like you talked about. You know, if we shorten it enough, being, getting out from underneath, having to replace the tires or some of the other wear and tear parts, um, having and, and having more uptime, you know, that we're doing pretty well for these, but, uh, you know, there's always a, a huge opportunity cost when uh, a truck is down and we can't put somebody to work and we can't send somebody out on the road uh, for their shifts to, to do a task that we had planned for them because their truck is out of operation. Um, yeah, my recommendation is, but we can run a couple other scenarios, uh, but I think that I would like to, I don't think I'd like to go to leasing. Uh, so, so what are the other scenarios you got here? I did a lease to buy. Okay. Is the next page. Uh, the lease to buy is over the, the period examined uh, would be the, our highest cost option. Okay. Um, you know, there, there are some of these lease to buys where we're, we might be able to negotiate a better one than the, what we were offered for research purposes, but what we were offered for this scenario uh, wasn't a, a great deal on this, that we would end up paying quite a bit for the final buyout payment. Okay. Uh, then I ran three. Hugh had asked about replacing the pickup a little bit early. So I ran the scenario of what if we replace the pickup uh, in, in this upcoming financial year instead of a uh, future financial year. And it has you know, very little impact on our overall budget. So you use those same three scenarios with replacing the pickup? Right. Okay. Um, so the only thing that jumped out at me on these last three scenarios was the, uh, the we, we, would, we would have two back-to-back -back fiscal years of less than 20,000 in our reserve fund. So this, if the replacement of the pickups, the only change that does have an impact of putting us 
in our reserve fund below 20,000 on two different two back-to-back -back years. Yes. Which is a little concerning because that's that's not a lot of padding there with only estimates out that far. Yeah, for um, FY 27 and 28 or uh, 26 and 27, depending on which scenario. Um, but yeah, uh, we would be hitting, in, in all scenarios, we'd be hitting our lowest point in that area. Yeah, that that was my initial concern was what the cascading effect would be of pulling because you know I know how much time and work goes into building one of these and if you do an out of cycle uh, purchase it, it it has a cascading effect out through right unless you swap it with something else Right, of equal value. Meaning True, yeah, if we ex out. extended something else out. Um, but that's that's hard, difficult to do because we are, you know, if anything, we're finding we're having to swap things more often than less. So on that topic, there was some discussion um, I heard about perhaps um, not trading the greater next year because perhaps it's in being used differently or it, it, it might not be necessary. Uh, yeah, uh, that, Hugh, do you wanna weigh in on this? I think it would be a mistake to keep it at, and that's only because that thing is so expensive to fix. And you could have another catastrophic failure and all of a sudden be stuck with a $40,000 bill to replace okay. it. Okay, I thought that there had been some discussion about it, that's why I asked. Well, there was some discussion about it, but it appears as if there's been a change up. So Hugh, what I'm hearing from you is is your recommendation that the greater would not be over 12 year. I think that we should replace it as planned. Um, like I said, they, they kind of dodged a bullet this last time when it had a transmission problem. It could have been a $36,000 repair. I think they did it for what, 10 or 12. Um, so it's a pretty big risk factor um, and there's some new <clears throat> technology out there with these new graders that is going to allow us to take better care of our roads. Um, so I would highly recommend staying the course. Hmm. But that's not early. What do you mean by that, Eric? Shortening the, the turnover of the grader because it next year is the schedule and next year that's what we're sounds like we're going to do. No, I uh, what I was asking Hugh is uh, was his recommendation that we not extend it out another year. Oh, I'm sorry. And and that's what it sounds like he is recommending. Gotcha. Okay. You know, the other thing we could do, Eric, to try and minimize. Well, maybe I'm not right in saying this. Go ahead. Never mind. Well, I was going to say um, we could uh, try and change the payment schedule um, a bit. I don't know if that's realistic or not, but uh, modifying that a little bit could. In what way? It would just help reduce. So, so I'm with you on having a $12,000, $13,000 balance in 2027 is high risk. Um, so I'm just thinking about mitigating that number in particular um, and trying to get it a little higher. Um, and in doing so, 
you know, looking at any of the lines that are contributing to that low balance in either 2026, 2027, or earlier years, frankly, um, are there ways we could pay more sooner or um, extend payments out for some of these to help uh, balance that? We can't, uh, we cannot go over five years. Oh, okay. That's a restriction. Of, I get you. Okay. Have to go get uh, go to voter approval for a, um, you know, Australian ballot for anything over five years. Uh, any you. equipment except for the grader, or are we just assuming that the? No, it, at, it's, least on, at least on the first budget, that's in there for six years. Uh, which one are you looking at? Uh I guess I was on page four. Did we ever decide if we were not going to go with the least option? Uh, that was my general take, but I don't we, think we so. haven't. No, we haven't finalized anything yet. Here. So the John Deere grader, uh, it's budgeted for 2022, 2023, $58,950. Same thing, 23, 24, 24, 25, 25, 26, 26, 27, and 27, 28. Just yeah. payment. Six years. Here. Thank you very much. Uh, let me. So that would change your fourteen thousand dollar balance. Or I guess depending on which sheet you went off from. But it definitely uh, give me it. one second to make sure that I'm uh, splitting the cost correctly. That would affect every single one of the scenarios. It will. Give me one second with this. Greater. It's good catch, Evan. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't no, even think to count much. them. Maybe we better count all of them now. <laughs> Is that? Eric Osgood said he'd make that sixth payment for the taxpayers. So. Yeah. 60000 dollars Next year, so 2% increase. Are we going to go over any of the other models? as well because there's you know the, the purchase outright model and then the lease tandems only model and then third one we went over what about the fourth fifth and sixth ones i can go over those give me one second to make this i'm just wondering what the difference is on uh, the only difference is i understood from what brian said is the fourth uh fifth and sixth ones was where they uh, had the same exact scenarios, except for with the pickup pickup traded uh, it, this current year versus next year when it's scheduled. Okay. That is six years. That is six years. Okay, so that there was a couple of them. Kevin just saved us about fifty thousand mm, dollars. Yeah. More. More. I'll take fifty percent of that. <laughs> Meet you guys in the middle. If that is true, that it saves well fifty thousand dollars or more. I'm sure it's more. I just pulled that out of the hat. I mean, it is. Uh, Unfortunately, that doesn't, our total cost over 11 years was correct. Uh, and it only affected our balance at the end of each year uh, for the extra payments. Okay. Right. So the cost over 11 years is the cost of all the equipment over 11 years. And that appears, I'll double check it uh, offline but that does appear to be calculated correctly. Hmm. 
So if that's I, I think I just copied. I think I I just copied each line over an additional time. Um, accidentally, I, but I don't think that that affects our, our. It does not appear to affect our total expenditure. Just the breakdown for each annual year, what that each year is cost. Okay. So it would not make purchasing even more favorable versus lease because the purchasing it price is correct. Well, and well, the lease will have the same will have the same effect, but it's all it's only affecting the end of each year. Uh, and it is calculated correctly here. But not here. But the 11 year isn't calculated from this part of the field. It's calculated separately based on the the total cost of the equipment uh, minus our, our salvage for each year, or for each piece of equipment, not for each year. So, so these that this... greatly improves our outlook for the end of a couple of years, but it doesn't change our overall picture. Uh, so, for example, in the uh, purchase option, we are going to dip below $20,000 in FY27, but that will be the only year that we do that. Under leasing, uh, we would still dip below $20,000 on FY26 and FY27. Why is that? Leasing shouldn't have taken. No, leasing takes over the next year. Can leasing be capitalized? Do these follow the town capitalization follow the same business logic? Like, sorry. Um, yeah, can leasing be capitalized? Is my question. We, we do have to cap, capitalize everything, but it, it's different than businesses, if I recall. Okay. Brian, do you recall or Rosemary? Not specific enough to be. Yeah, I, I can't give you a definitive answer. I, 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 we are not the same as a business. Uh, this is one of the many ways we're not exactly the same as a business, but I. I, I reluctant to say because I, I could easily be wrong. I, I don't have a lot of confidence in that. Because that would make uh, a difference too, right? Yeah. <laughs> make a difference either in operating or in capital. Um, so yeah, I think that there's more to, I, I think that it definitely warrants a little bit more uh, examination about what some of these scenarios could prove uh, and whether we might want to replace, we might want to explore uh, replacement at a, a different schedule, you know, a, a six or seven year schedule. Um, so you're suggesting that we come back and visit this? I, I The capital plan, the total capital plan, I think we should, it warrants a little bit more examination and a little bit more time. Um, yeah, I would want to be absolutely sure that the changes you made, uh, you know, they don't cascade out somewhere else and affect something else. And that there's not some other mistakes in here that we need to yeah. catch. 
because that was a pretty significant change. Yeah, to, to, to that point, I'd like to see, Brian, if, you know, maybe later in the week, once you've had given it the once over again, if you could just send us or at least me the the actual Excel file with these tabs so I can see the formulas and all you know, that, I think that'd be really helpful. Sure. Okay, is the rest of the board uh, agree? We don't really feel comfortable tonight with some of these yeah. changes they found. I would agree with that. Yeah, of course, you're the one that found the big mistake. Yeah, but the bottom line was still the same though, right? Well, <laughs> we think. Yeah. I mean, it was just a... Uh... Yeah, I, I'm... I, I've got to go over it again, but I'm, I'm confident I'm as confident as I can be about the um, the basic understanding of I think purchasing looks best, but it warrants a little bit more examination. Um, right now, our total outlay over 11 years is greater than our total appropriation. And that's, that's with all scenarios or with the purchase? Uh, in leasing over 11 years, here we go. Leasing over 11 years uh, is the closest, but I think that's misleading because it captures kind of the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we would have eight years under our purchase scenario and then only three years under the leasing scenario. And the first lease, you get that benefit of a trade-in value, which we usually get significant value for our trade-ins. Correct. But after that, it would be a, there'd be no trade-in value. And you'd be seeing those expenses year after year. So I think it's misleading that the uh, lease option appears like a good deal when we look at it over a longer period of time, because we're not looking at it a long enough period of time. Right. So I think we're going to take these projections out a little bit farther and look at a couple different scenarios. I think we uh, need to look at our total spend also, like profit loss spend. So to your point, we don't have those assets, which means we don't have the revenue from those assets or the, so what our total profit losses over time will tell that story. Correct. Um, the, we also have the question before us about the about the pickup truck in particular. Uh, well, those are getting a little hard to lay hands on. Are we taking that up as part of the capital equipment fund or as part of, as a request to move it up? Well, I, I think that we're not going to be able to approve the capital equipment fund tonight. We have certainly seen a, a pass through in it. We've, seen some comparisons with lease and all that um, but it is a separate question because we're not going to have this prepared tonight so you know is the board willing to go out of cycle and and uh and swap the pickup truck this year that would be a, another a separate question for the board eric can you um, eric brian can you pull up that tab early truck purchase yes thank you mm -hmm. 
was the uh, change in what needed to be financed through the dealership and what the town would pay for the fit up for the bed. I'm assuming here. Uh, no, we got updated numbers for that today. Uh, Q sent along. What you got by which, email is which afternoon. The, the dealership cost and what he says the town needs to finance are seven thousand dollars difference. I'm assuming that's for a fit up or something. I'm ask you to. Um, I don't have my email in front of me with the attachments. I didn't bring my laptop home. I'm using my personal one. Okay. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I've got yeah, them seven, here. Seven thousand dollar difference for a bed. Yes. Okay. So. Yes. And uh, let's see. The amount we have to fund is. A little bit and it's basically the same price uh, that, that's in the uh, the 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 balance sheet the estimate You're not, and you're not looking at any uh, financing on this, though, right? No, we wouldn't be financing this. Okay. Uh, well, we we haven't in the past, I should say. Yeah. Um. And it will be a little. I'm correct. It will be a little bit less, uh, even with the bed figured in, those are twenty six thousand, twenty seven thousand to be safe. Um. It's at a 33. Okay. Where are you getting 33? So I'm, I'm seeing 26.9. Uh, 33 was what I built uh, the estimate with. Okay, but the actual wouldn't be that. No. The actual is a, a, about another $7,000 less. Which would help us in our uh, annual belt balance out there in the what 26 28 something like that yeah fy 27 hey. <laughs> okay so it looks like it's affordable if we can trust you know those annual balances When this was first brought up uh, last month, there was talks about it saving the town money in the long run because they could keep this truck for an extra year instead of turning it out on the five-year term. Right now, it looks like they're just shifting the five years up, which is fine if that's the case, but that's not the bill of sale the last time, I guess. And uh, my question would be if, if we're having such issues with Dodge Ram transmissions um, and so on and so forth that want to push it up a year. Why are we buying the same vehicle and trying to get six out of it instead of four? It doesn't have a heavy spec transmission. No, you, I know Ram used to do that, but I, I just see a bill of sale that could be signed really, not so much on detail. The, um, what to keep in mind is that the replacement is going to be a diesel, um, which is a completely entirely different drivetrain. Um, <clears throat> so transmission is different. It's all heavier duty. This is a one ton versus a three quarter with a completely different drive line. I'm confident that's a much better option. And we explored the other brands and uh, they were all just way high. I mean, we're talking five, $6,000 differences in trade-in value plus the truck itself would be another couple thousand dollars. So, um, I'm confident that the RAM is probably our best option. And they're still giving us 30,000 for the radio truck too. For now, they will give yeah. it another couple of months that bubble is gonna pop. Oh yeah, I tell the truth. Could pop tomorrow for all we know. So is, the question is, is the overall idea 
bill of sale to the taxpayers or whatever you want to call it. Are we replacing this one early and replacing the next truck at the same time? Or are we moving that five-year period up? From what uh, Brian's got presented here, it would still stay on a five-year rotation. It would just be sliding one year in. I made that estimate. Um, you know, if we get closer to the end of life with this truck and think we can make it last another year, then that would be a great option for us. But, you know, we've been, we do have several life cycles with these foreman trucks and we've been replacing them pretty consistently every five years. Uh, some of them have been have needed it more than others, uh, but I think trying to get six years out of it is a nice idea, but I wouldn't plan on it. You know, I think my you plan would be to replace it after five years. I wouldn't hesitate keeping it six, just, you know, being it's going to be a diesel <clears throat> and uh, I have put a fraction of the miles on uh, that my predecessor had with that thing. So I think you're going to see, uh, you know, it'll last longer. I don't, I'm averaging right now I'm on pace to do like 10,000 a year with it. And my predecessor was doing uh, almost 20. What is, go ahead, Evan, sorry. No, go for it now. Just wondering what the difference is. What's the, What's the change in philosophy between uh, supervisors that is 10,000 miles quite a bit? I think 10,000 miles is half of what my predecessor was putting on. So I, I don't know how he was using it, but. Okay, Brian, do you have any sense of that? I, I don't, you know, I don't think that all right, I know that Brian wasn't, you know, misusing it or taking it out of town or anything, but I don't have a good handle on why his mileage would be that much higher than Hughes. Double. You're taking it home at night, Hugh. I haven't been because it's broken, but uh, yes, I would. <laughs> well, that's why you're not putting miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's a piece of crap, that's why. It's interesting that it's such a dramatic difference. Very curious. Well, I, okay. We, I, go ahead, Eric. Well, I was just going to ask what the board's pleasure is. Uh, do they want to take this out of turn? Um, like I said earlier, we're not going to be able to finalize the capital equipment fund tonight, but uh, do you want to take it out a turn uh, or authorize the purchasing of the pickup? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say yes if we put it at six year turnover and mm -hmm. advice to the future board is to stick to that. Um, there is something very unusual with the truck market right now that is making trade-ins ridiculously uh, attractive. So uh, it's true that that's not going to last forever. I do imagine it'll last for a while, but we don't know. Uh, I'll move. Do I, should we just put a motion out there? Yep. We're need go one, right? So I'll move that we go ahead and purchase the um, Ram truck um this this year this fiscal year sorry are we talking we're talking 2021 this fiscal year um and make it a uh, not schedule the next purchase until fiscal year 2027 um so the six year term um but approve the purchase uh with the quoted trade-in value thank you very much we have a motion do we have a second I'd second that. Okay, we have motion and second. Any discussion? Okay. Let's 
Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. If we'd done this last meeting, you could have had a crew cab for the same price. What's he need a crew cab for? Well, he could have got a crew cab for the same price if we'd done it last month. Well, we didn't have the, the we hadn't looked at the capital yeah. equipment. Okay. Well, you got to do it, a process here. Yeah. I know. So, uh, any other, anything else further with the capital equipment fund? Nothing uh, else with the fund, uh, but I want to take a couple more seconds with the uh, plan itself. Okay. And give you an idea of some of the updates I'm, I'm making. I'm going to uh, bring the expenditures to current. Uh, when I finish updating the plan, I am not planning on uh, taking up and fixing the uh, the repairs and bringing those current, uh, unless the unless you want me to. What what repairs? What are you talking about there? Uh, on page 14 in your packet. I'll share my screen so you can oh. see it. Okay. That was some of the report from 2017? Yeah. The, some yeah. of this was yeah. looking at our, our prior plan. And I don't want to dig into this, the, the tables too much unless you want me to. Um, Does the board the feel there's any value in updating those? I mean, it's in the budget we have, right? An Excel budget, the updated yeah. values. Yeah, then no. Okay, I don't, um, I don't sense that there's a urgency from the board that you uh, get into those. Okay. Uh, so I'm making a couple fixes to uh, some of our reserve funds here and uh, reserve funds that we've added since this was last written, or last updated, updating our existing capital assets table. And I'm gonna try and update the uh, tax rates and what that projection is going to be. Um, I think that pretty well takes us through what I'm planning on doing, unless anybody has any areas that they want to see changes or, or want more detail uh, for the Britain plan. Any board members? Not seeing any, Brian. Okay. So some of those details we'll, have, we'll wait until we make a decision on what our future replacement plan is going to be if we're going to be doing leasing or shortening it from eight to another period but uh, we'll get into that so that that's kind of the, the updates i plan to make all right so that finishes up our capital equipment plan uh the next piece we have up is uh Vast has some requests for us on uh, their trail system. So I'm going to share it. I'm going to share my screen here. So this is. It's up on French Hill. Yeah, that's French Hill first. And if I remember from the email, currently it's the yellow dashed line where the trail is and the yep. red is the proposed. And that's why they've come before the board because they want to change a trail in this uh, red section. Yes. And they do realize they have to go to the village as well, correct? Yep, uh, that's town and village on property, so. 
Yeah, they'll right. have to present to the village too. So the blue lines are not on municipal property. Is that correct? Right, and that's a that's a proposed if they're able to get it an additional uh, from another landowner, but it really has nothing to do with us. Seems like a benefit to everyone if they're not using the uh, the regular highway, yep. so they're a little further away from uh, any any houses. They're off town highway for a significant amount. Is there a board pleasure in making a motion authorizing this change contingent upon the village? No move. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. And their second proposal. Is there a trail there already? Or are they going to be blazing brand new trail through the forest? I believe it's a combination. I saw Bobby Rooney on earlier, and I see Rob Rodriguez, if she's not still here. Well, we already did it, so I guess a little late for asking questions. Uh, I'm going to ask Rob if he can unmute. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes go ahead. Uh, so there is a, Brian was correct, there's a semi-existing trail there. I mean, we'd have to go in and debrush a lot of things, move some rocks, stuff like that. But it's, you know, it's probably a day's worth of work with a couple of guys and a little bit of equipment. It's not, we're, we're trying to follow an existing path, yes. Thanks. All right. And the next trail, uh, did that update on your screen? No. No. Okay. Now we've got the new trail system. This is up uh, Gould Hill. So right now, so they lost a significant trail that bypassed most of Gould Hill. Yes. And okay. they're still going to bypass most of Gould Hill, but they'll be next to it. There'll be a long Gould Hill for uh, a couple properties, and then they'll be able to get off the road. Okay. But they will have to travel along Gould Hill for a stretch. And then they catch drag lot. And then I think there's an old existing trail that. That's the trail that uh, VASA, the ATV the VASA, club uses yep. through okay. the uh, future light industrial park to get down to Jollies. But they've been granted access to Gold Hill already. The Snowmobile Club? Previously, we have ridden a small portion of that road. We just wanted to make sure. So, so we have, as the club, we have to have our paperwork in for grants before the end of the month, and which means we have to get permissions and, and things like that and cost and estimates so that we can get our grants from BASH so we can make the changes. So, I mean, ideally, if you see that blue dotted line, we would be traveling that route, but uh, we have to... Know, talk to the landowners, meet with them, walk the property, and we just haven't had time to do that. So, this is our traveling the road is our, you know, if if we can't do the blue line, that's our fallback. But we, we'd love to to do the blue line trail. I mean, we we want to be off the road as much as possible. It's not always easy, but but yes, we do travel a small portion of Gold Hill, or we have in the past. It's board's pleasure. I move that we give them per the past club permission to travel on Gould Hill for the section mapped. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. 
Motion is second. Any discussion? Um, can I offer an amendment uh, to travel Gould Hill if necessary and um, access to the light industrial park property? I'll accept that. How about you, Mike? Friendly. Yes. Yep. Uh, I, it's probably a belt and suspend, suspenders because they already had authorization on our industrial park. But yeah. Okay, it's been a friendly amendment. Any other comments? None. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Highway Thank Grant. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you, Rob. All right. So next up, uh, a little bit of history on this. In 2019, we went out for a class two put paving grant to make repairs to Plot Road. That grant was uh, in, we made the proposal in 2019. COVID happened before they funded any of the grant applications. So the grant application was canceled and we received a small, uh, a small contribution for road projects in general from the state. Uh, this year, they have enough money in their, uh, their coffers for funding projects of this style that they have come back to a couple of their older applications that were not granted in the past, namely paving for Plot Road. We had already elected to do the reclamation of paving on Plot Road uh, out of our own funds because it needed to be done. We couldn't afford to grind down the whole road, rebuild the base and pave it, uh, but we needed to do something up there. So we reclaimed the road. and and rebuilt the base, but topped it with gravel. We now have the opportunity to go back and pave the road. Uh, and this has happened a lot sooner than we had thought it might. Um, so I, I, both Hugh and I support signing this and uh, committing to doing the project for paving. Too bad we couldn't use the money for something else. No, it, it is only for paving. Yeah, I know. And they will not pay us back for the reclamation work that we already did. Yes. Uh, but that does mean we've got a little bit more money to spend on paving itself. So we're covered pretty well, despite the fact that the estimate that we used for this grant is uh, now over a year old. Do we have to spend it on Plot Road? Yes. Evan? Has uh, Hugh or yourself actually talked to somebody? I mean, from what I've heard about asphalt, it's not a normal increase this year. It's an exacerbated infl inflation rate. So that amount of money, I don't think is going to go nearly as far as it was expected. We don't have a new estimate for it. Um, but you're right. Asphalt prices are astronomically high right now. Um, we have more, a little bit more money to spend on paving than we had originally budgeted, but it still might not, the amount of money we're granted might not pave the same length that we had before. So we might be filing an amendment for this, uh, saying that the amount they're granting us will not pave the length that we asked for and ask for an amendment of an increased funding or uh, an increased length. Nah. Is there, what are the reasons to do this beyond somebody's given us money to do it? Uh, the same kind of historic reasons that Plot Road was paved before, that it is a frequently traveled road, uh, especially in that section uh, leading up toward the uh, journey's end. Um, but no, if, if we don't see future development uh, and use that 
we think Plot Road should be paved, we're under no obligation to, to pave it. And that's also a class two highway, so we get a higher reimbursement rate. Yes. Just think if, I mean, if there's a safety reason or if it's, if there's a maintenance problem with the gravel that, but over the long term, it's going to be less expensive to maintain this gravel, even if they give us some money for it now, which is paving it because they give us money, I think is not, uh, it doesn't sit right with me. I agree with you, Nat. It looks pretty good just the way it is. Me too. I mean, I do want to offer whatever opportunity there is for the old timers in the room to say, actually, Plot Road has a big, you know, spring in the middle of it that, you know, the gravel is a problem, but I, I'm not, I haven't heard that yet. No, that, that was a problem with the, the, the problem we had when it was paved uh, was that the sub base wasn't well constructed, uh, but that's been fixed. Uh, so it'll do much better now as a gravel road. It would do better than it, it had been if we repaved it. Um, but I don't think that one is necessarily better than the other. So what's the board's pleasure? You want to decline the grant? Is here still on? No. Do you want me to uh, message him, ask him back? Yes. Well, yes, because he kind of initially wanted to do it. Well, he wanted, so yes, that would be great if he could, but, you know, it wasn't, it was a month ago, maybe, that we talked about this last, and everyone was all for reclaiming it and how great it would be, and I feel like I'm hearing a different story now that we have grant money, so that's just throwing me off a lot. Well, awesome. I, uh, go ahead. Something had to be done with it, and we didn't have the money to pave it. Yeah, but we were talking about how great it would be when it was reclaimed. And it's pretty great. I traveled it this weekend. I actually thought it was really nice. It yeah. is nice, but we had to do something, like Evan said, and we originally were going to pay that. And, uh, now we've got the money, but unfortunately, the money's not going to go very far, I don't think, anyway. So really, what's the use? Increases speeds. Yeah. Pay that's everybody slow. <laughs> just drop it. I don't think we need it. What are you laughing at? Can we reapply it to, you know, like the Waterville section of Plot Road towards Johnson? Uh, we couldn't apply it to the it, Waterville section, but... It's it's in front of my house. I was joking. Okay. <laughs> Making a joke. Looking for some graft. Yeah. So uh, there is no opportunity to re uh, uh direct that to another place in the town not at this time i can see about writing a new application if they have okay. money in their fund that is going unspent they might consider it uh but i suspect that if we turn them down there's probably somebody else further down the list who's going to take the money yeah yeah I'm well sure it's just too bad that we couldn't use it some other place where it was more actually needed than that spot there. You know, it's just, it's just too bad, but it is what it is. Um, if there's no further comments from board members, we do have a public member who would like to speak. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bashir. I'm Travis Smith's wife. Um, he's on the chat too, but he's struggling to um, get unmuted. Um, but we just wanted to give a few comments on Plot Road, if that was okay. Go ahead. Um, so we're on um, 46 Plot Road. I'm sure most of you have seen the house coming up. Yep. Um, yep. And we, uh, so we were um, for the paving of the road um, for several reasons. The dust is um, quite a health hazard. We've realized being up there uh, for as long as we have. And um, it's a really, really busy road um, for several reasons. Obviously there's the connection to Waterville and there's uh, the watering hole. Um, and there's always just runners, cyclists and 
uh, obviously the regular uh, vehicle traffic. Um, and it's, uh, you know, just on the daily, the dust is just getting uh, worse and worse. Um, it's piling up uh, on the roads. It, it's a health hazard and environmental hazard. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's just, like you said, it's a second class highway. Um, so, you know, that's something we were, um, as, you know, and I'm sure if you spoke to other uh, members of the public who lived on the on plot road where uh, most of us are in agreement, uh, that is something that um, is required. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And Hugh is back, but I'm not seeing, I think he's having trouble with the audio. Two hues. We've only got one, but it doesn't have the audio is not connected. Uh, we'll give him a, a, a second. There he is. But, okay. Hey, Hugh, we're, we're having a, if you can hear me. Hugh? I'm going to message him because I'm still. I'm still not showing him as muted or unmuted. Can you hear us, Hugh? Uh, he says he's going to try and call him. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the option of muting him or unmuting him. But it looks like... That's strictly a technology problem. Um, Yeah, I don't have a lot more to say to kind of fill time about this, but okay, you'll have to hit, I believe it's there you go. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah. Hey, Hugh. So we're uh, discussing Hi. plot road. Uh, we do have a, the grant been approved now for paving it. As, as we all know, about a month ago, we decided to reclaim it. And you guys went ahead and did that work. Uh, now we do have the grant. Do we move forward or not? There's been some discussion of the merits of doing it or the merits of just leaving it the way it is. We are looking for some thoughts from you. Well, when I, when we decided to reclaim, I put in there that if we ever decided to pay it, it wasn't a lost cause to reclaim it. So I feel like we have the money available to us. We might as well pay it. Okay. We did hear from one member of the public who was strongly in favor of repaving it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to affect by their place anyway. It's not going to be paved there. It's just going to be paved where it's been reclaimed, correct? Uh, again, the, the link is, is uh, it, we're going to have to see how much we can cover with the amount of money they, they have for us. Um, the link that was paved might not be and probably will not be as long as it was before. But we're not going to start paving uh, right from uh, the corner of uh, Plot Road, are we? And go toward uh, Waterville. We're just going to pave where it's been reclaimed where it was before, right? I don't know. What was the uh, terms of the grant? Uh, 
Uh, let me look. Well, Brian's looking that up here. We, um, Nat also asked what the benefit of, is. Are we paving it, you know, because we gain something? Do we end up spending more in the long run? No, well, I think, uh, you know, it's less to maintain. That last uh, asphalt, I imagine it was 20 years old, wasn't it? Probably. So I don't think we, uh, you know, there's, <laughs> I guess in reality, it doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Um, but if we have the money available to us, and it's not going to cost us anything, I think we ought to take advantage of it. Okay. Brian, we also have somebody from the public who would like to speak. Okay. Hi, this is Lottie. Um, I just want to echo what um, uh, Bash Bashar was saying. Um, I also live around the corner and it is incredibly dusty. Uh, it's not like the other parts of the dirt road that are quite compact. It is like, it brings up a lot of dust when cars drive down it, which is often incredibly fast. Um, I walk there constantly every single day, at least twice a day uh, with my dog and there are often times where I turn around and actually just go up Clay Hill because it's so bad. Um, if, if there's an option to pave it, uh, it was far better before. Um, and I would obviously not voting, but I would be in favor of it as a, a resident in the area. Thank you, Lottie. You feel that it's um, just as dusty this year? It's the reclaiming of the road has made it more dusty because it's like not as compact as sure. other parts like once you hit um journey's end that part of the road then it's it's fine um it's just that area in general because it's very much in the sun too it just tends to dry up a lot faster i think thank you lottie so you wants that compacts with use in the meantime, could we do more dust treatments on that section? No, that's why I'm kind of surprised because um, we've increased um, the quantity of chloride applied uh, to these roads. Um, so I'm surprised it's still dusty. I'm just wondering if, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of odd. We put a uh, thousand gallons a mile um, ratio down on it, just like all the um, dirt roads. So it really shouldn't be any dustier, you wouldn't think, but it's unfortunate that it is. Um, you know, I'm not on it every day. She would know better than I, but this is the first I've heard of it. Definitely not as packed as the other roads. That's I was definitely noting that when I was driving over it, but I just assumed that comes mm -hmm. with time. Well, is it what you're seeing is bigger pieces too. You know, your roads are, your, your dirt roads are composed um, with inch and a quarter gravel. So your pieces are maximum size of inch and a quarter. Um, whereas that reclaimed stuff is probably a bit chunkier. So I don't think it, appears that it's as packed. I think it is as packed, um, you know, but you get that uh, smooth finish of a completely packed gravel surface, but <clears throat> it's, uh, that different material um, certainly is just as hard. Um, I'm actually surprised it's got any dust component to it since it's pretty much all granulated asphalt with no, um, no fines, so that's interesting. Um, well, <clears throat> Mike, I drove over it last week, and uh, you know, you notice where the transition is, uh, where the real smooth part of the older road was. But when you get to where the reclaim part was, it is you know bigger pieces. But I didn't notice any dust when I was over it. But you know, it, it is what it is. I. I guess the point is now that we've 
we've got the money uh, to do it. And if, uh, and I hate to say this, uh, but if we don't spend it, somebody else is going to, you know, it's not like it's going to go back to the tax rolls or something. So I, I guess in that case, uh, we've got it. We might just as well spend it uh, knowing that we're not going to have the same amount of uh, footage uh, as we would have liked last year, but we'll just be able to pay with what we've got and let it go at that. Okay, Mike. Uh, Brian, we got another, looks like Travis Smith. Hey, go ahead, Travis. Uh, you'll have to unmute yourself, Travis. We're having a, a technical problem there. Well, Travis is um, trying to get on. Um, I'll shut up if, if he chimes in. But um, I said I'm, real, I'm sensitive to the to, to what we're hearing about dust. Um, the other concern I heard was with the speed of traffic, and I, I think it this would likely solve the dust issue. I think it would actually result in traffic going faster. Um, on the plot exactly. road as it was before, uh, you couldn't go fast because uh, it was all chewed up. But as soon as we, um, as soon as we put a nice uh, uh, asphalt layer on there, we will bet money that we start getting complaints about traffic going too fast. So it's it's a bit of a yin and a yang there. And we can address this uh, dust issue. Um, you know, short of throwing some nails out, we can't really personally do anything about the speed. <laughs> I was getting on. Uh, I don't know if he made it or not. I, no, it looks like he it gave doesn't up. Look like it. Okay, what's board's pleasure? I move we have the money, we might as well spend it. Okay, strong endorsement motion. Do we have a second? I'd second that motion and second any other comments i did look to see and i suppose we weren't uh specific about where it started is that we were going to pave 2400 feet on plot road uh that was previously paved so it was probably the whole length i imagine yeah, we're starting at the corner and hill. going up, the, up to the end of the pavement. Yep. Any further comments? So this is, this is going to have to go back out for an RFP, correct? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we can ask Hutchins if they'll honor their uh, quote from last year, but I, they, I doubt it. They won't. No, they won't. Yeah. yeah okay. we're, we're out of the, the... This was supposed to be conducted... If we'd gotten the money we, when we applied for it, it would have been conducted in 2020. Um, so I don't think they're, they're under no obligation to honor their, uh, the quote that they gave us. Uh, but the state did not give us uh, an opportunity to submit a new quote. Do you want me to follow up with them and just broach that topic before we go through the process again? Yes. Yeah, we'll have to find out how much we can get done with the money we have to spend. Um, assuming the board approves it, we haven't actually voted yet. And then uh, you but can we'll have to go find out how much we can get done with the money that they've given us. And then we'll have to uh, submit a correction to the state that either they give us more money to cover 2,400 feet or they accept our amendment that reduces the 2,400 feet to whatever we can afford. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Oh, okay, we'll have to do a roll call. Those uh, in favor? Mike? 
Aye. Uh, Evan? Aye. Nat, how do you vote? No. Beth, how do you vote? No. And the chair votes in favor as well. Motion passes. Okay. All right. Fire protection. We've received the contract for fire protection from the village. Uh, that is in your packet. There we go, page 44 in your packet. Can we get the packet numbered? Say again? Can we get numbers in the packet going forward? Sure. That would be great, thank you. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be hard to add a overriding page number to all these. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll figure something out. Thank you. So it is the the last three pages of the, the packet are the contract. Uh, let's see, fee for service for the calendar year 2021. $90,748. Yep. And we had budgeted. That is the same amount we budgeted? Yes. Okay. Interesting, yeah, we, isn't it? Well, I hope. <laughs> What's the board's pleasure? We can't exist without a fire contract, so. I make the motion that we go authorizing the chair 90, to sign. No, authorizing the chair to sign for ninety thousand seven hundred forty-eight dollars. We have motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Is this the same contract? Oops, sorry. Go ahead, Beth. Is this the same contract we got last year? Like there are no wording changes. Uh, they're specifying when they'd like the quarterly payments here. Last time, uh, I believe that since this was all the town paying the village, so it's all within the office, uh, we were a little more free with when the payments were made. Okay. Um, I think our, our fire department does an exceptional job. Um, I, I, Thank them for what they do. The last page of this document is just the signatures and nothing else. I'm wondering if we can monkey with the formatting a little bit, um, just so that they don't have just signatures on a blank page. Uh, maybe put some page numbers on there, four or five or five or five, et cetera. Um, would be my request. Clean up the formatting a little bit so that it it either fits onto two pages or is a sensible three pages. Yes, with page numbers. Just yeah. shrink the font a little. Thank you. I think the page X of X is a good point, Nat, an important point. All right. Is that something you can make as a change, Brian? Um, it's the village who's offering us the contract, so we would be asking them to make the change, but okay. I don't imagine that something like that will. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect an objection. Any other discussion? Sorry, one other question. Um, okay. And we do, we do contract with them for calendar year as opposed to fiscal year? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they're on a calendar budget, the village. Okay. 
That was actually changed a few years ago. Uh, that wasn't actually changed a few years ago. What we did do, though, is uh, 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 I don't remember which item it is, but there is a uh, a provision to allow the board an out if the uh, voters at town meeting tell us that you know they that they don't support something like this. Right, I knew there was something in there, some caveat yeah. we had, but it, it still operates on calendar. Right. Anything else? Seeing nothing, none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Your eyes have it. Okay, so we'll just pass that back to Meredith, see if we can get the page X of whatever. Yeah, I don't remember if she gave me a PDF or a Word document. If she gave me a Word document, I'll make the changes and send it back and say, you know, are you okay yeah. with these changes? If I only have a PDF, I'll ask her if she'll, she yep. would make the changes. Okay. Howard Romero, solid waste. Want we just so make a motion? Howard. Do we need to talk about it? <laughs> I'll just make the motion. How about that? Okay, go I ahead. Motion right to ahead. A, I motion to appoint Howard Romero as Johnson representative to the Lamoil Regional Solid Waste District. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on having Howard represent us at the Solid Waste District? Beth, Thank you said you, that with such glee. <laughs> yeah thank you Howard someone's got to do it That's right. okay any further discussion not seeing any all those in favor signify saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. Those, those opposed the ayes have it congratulations Howard uh, I'll give them the good news same um, thing yeah. ready go ahead <laughs> Motion to appoint Abby Gladstone to the uh, Tuesday Night Live Committee. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. COVID. All right. So this one's also pretty easy. Uh, the as we the, the we're looking at reopening soon. The guidance document. If you those of you who are on the board before remember, we had to write a sixteen-page, a pretty lengthy guidance document about how to handle uh, the COVID nineteen modifications we were making in the workplace. Uh, we've upheld that for a while. Um, they are doing away with the requirement for that document. Uh, so we can, in a much more simple way, so that we are, by motion, uh, adopting the governor's universal guidance rules for our employees and visitors to the municipal building. What that would mean currently is that um, visitors to the municipal building who are uh, unvaccinated or we don't know their vaccine status uh, would follow social distancing rules and uh, kind of the regular guidance uh, that we've all had for a long time. Uh, but for individuals who are fully vaccinated, um, you know, th those are recommendations, not rules. Any comments from board members on that? Pretty routine stuff. Uh, the only thing I'll add is I would like to, our next regular meeting, have it as in-person for board members only. We will do it. We will uh, obviously do Zoom for the public. And probably by July, we'll be back fully open to, uh, you know, to the public as well as board, obviously. When we come to that point, it will be my suggestion that uh, if we allow Zoom to uh, trans transmit our meetings, that that would be fine. Do it the same way that local access TV does. 
Uh, however, if anybody wants to participate, I, we wouldn't be having a, you know, it wouldn't be participation from Zoom, but it would be uh, just a view only. And if anybody wanted to participate in a meeting, they would have to come to our meeting. But that would be my suggestion. Um, unless I'm hearing anything from the board, we'll, we'll try to have at least board members only present for our next regular meeting. Be the first time in over a year. Okay. Maybe this is a good opportunity to talk about vaccination rates real quick, since Go we're ahead. on this topic. Yep. Um, the state has put out a new vaccination uh, map on vaccination rates by town. And it's very interesting. Um, it's interesting because they're a little bit all over the map, <laughs> pun intended. Um, but Johnson's rate is a little lower than I frankly expected to see. Um, we're at a 51 to 60% vaccination rate. Um, our neighbors are Eden matches us in the categorization, um, but all of our other neighbors with the exception of Eden and Belvedere are, actually have higher vaccination rates than we do, um, which you know surprised me. So I would really love to see Johnson's vaccination rates increase. Um, and I would like for all of us to advocate for that if we could. Um, Nat, go ahead. Great point, Beth. Uh, the emergency management team met this morning and and we do have potentially an opportunity to, to host a pop-up vaccine clinic in the municipal building. And Brian and I will be reaching out and trying to get some more information on that. Um, if it's not at the municipal building, potentially it could be at another uh, business or location in Johnson. But yeah, we will have the opportunity to, to vaccinate right here in Johnson. Awesome. Okay, any further comments? Thank you. And move on. Longley Cemetery. Do we need to Sorry, do we need to do anything? Do we need to adopt anything for the universal guidance? Um, yeah, I think I, actually I would. We did adopt the OSHA rules. So I think I would like to see the board replace that with the, the universal guidance as provided by the CDC. Okay. Is there a board motion to, to so direct that? I just would like some clarification. Oh, someone, okay, I'll wait. Scott would like to pipe in as well. All right, uh, let me get Scott's mic. Did somebody move? Should we get the... Uh, yeah, we, it would actually be helpful if we got a, you know, a motion on the floor first. Yeah, the, the only comment I had, Brian, was we should probably dial into make the, the motion. Oh, right. let's, let's, let's Scott go. Yeah, I was just going to say um, it would be better if you reference the Vermont Department of Health and not CDC in that motion. Thank you, Scott. Thank uh, you. You're right that we're the guidance we're getting is from the Vermont Department of Health, right. not directly from the CDC. Thanks. So noted. Thank you, Scott. Was that your motion, Ed? But I thought you said Vermont Department of Health. That's what I was asking because Brian said CDC at the end, but the first time he said Vermont Department of Health, so I was confused. Yeah, it, it should be Vermont Department of Health. Okay. I'd what? entertain a motion from somebody. Uh, I motion that uh, the town of Johnson adopt the COVID-19 universal guidance for employees and visitors per the Vermont Department of Health guidelines. Good. Thank you, Evan. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Beth, how do you vote? Aye. Nat, how do you vote? Yes. Mike, how do you vote? Yay. Evan, how do you vote? 
Yes. And motion passes. All right. Uh, then, yeah, uh, the new Longley Cemetery plot deed. Uh, we they had made a request for a change in location. Um, I can share this if you're you're interested, but they are moving the, uh, the location of their plot to the western edge of the near the western edge of the uh, property. So we had already pre-approved. Uh, you had approved a different location. Different location, and they've simply moved the location. Correct. Okay. Just changed the mind, must be. Huh? Yeah, I guess. Or uh, we we had two different members of the Longley family uh, making a request, and I had conflated the two. Um, Okay. What's the board's pleasure? Do you want to modify the original plot deed? So moved. Okay, we have motion to change the plot deed. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. And this will require all board members to go in and sign. Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those, po those opposed? The ayes have it. All right. Law enforcement option. Was this Nat? Yes, please. If you will, Nat. Okay. I met with uh, Linda Martin, uh, Kurt, um, I've forgotten Kurt's last name, uh, but they're both at the Wolcott Select Board. Klein. 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 Um, and Susan Bartlett, chair of the Hyde Park Select Board. Um, we have all um, reviewed so far what um, the law enforcement, the now dissolved law enforcement um, study committee had done and, su and submitted and what Duncan had submitted on his own as well as what Diana had submitted on her own um, and talked about um, what the next steps would be. Um, we're meeting again this coming Wednesday um three things three action items that we had talked about um one is to review community needs um whether they're currently being met or not where the what are the community needs for law enforcement in johnson um the second action item was to identify gaps or open questions that have not been answered um, or addressed in the research that's been done so far. And um, the third was an action item for Susan Bartlett. She was gonna look into um, the status of the 30 year retirement plan and exactly do some research on um, some of the reasons that it's been denied so far by the treasurer um, of the state. Um, and why it um, a change in the retirement plan was was allowed for another county sheriff, um, but it's being denied to to Loyal County. So we're doing we're doing some research into that. We you know I, I think it's it's become really clear that this thirty year retirement plan we've you know we we've heard it over and over and over again, but it's putting it us at us at putting us at a real disadvantage, um, officers. Um, rookies get hired on. The Lower County Sheriff puts them through um, through the academy. They work two years. They get experience. If they, you know, um, if they work out, then they're hired up. They're snapped right up by a neighboring department, Stowe, Morrisville in particular. Their ranks are are filled with former Lower um, County deputies. Um, and part of that's because of a, a big part of that is because of the 30 year retirement that so we want to, we do want to do a little research into what other reasons that might be. Um, so really what I'm asking of the board is to, in fairly short order, if you could just email me or Beth um, 
probably don't email us both, but because of open meeting, but um, you know, what you see is open needs that either are not being fulfilled or need to be fulfilled by the Wild County Sheriff's Department. Um, send us um, get, uh, questions or areas of the report so far that you feel um, have not been addressed that we need to research. Uh, and if you can get that to us fairly quickly. Um, we do need to sign a contract. Our, co our current contract co ends, uh, runs out at the end of the month. Um, the other towns um, have proposed making some changes to the contract. We're under such a tight um, time budget, uh, time limit <laughs> with the, the end of the month coming up. I'm not really sure how that'll work out. We might end up proposing a short-term and term contract until we can make some, uh, have time to, to work out some, some larger changes. I think there's general agreement, both in the, from the committee work and from the discussion that we had that the contract itself is pretty general. It's pretty um, vague. And uh, there's a lot of opportunity for um, improvement um, for us to get a little more specific or a lot more specific on what our expectations are of, um, of the department. And what did I miss, Beth? Yeah, great. I think you hit it all. All right. So stay tuned on that. We, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks we'll we'll end up proposing that we sign the but sign the contract as it is, or we'll perhaps ask for a temporary extension. And thanks, Nat. Any questions, board members? Okay. Thank you. We'll look forward to seeing what you come up with. Uh, let's see, circle back. The only thing that I had added as an item was the Holcomb House. Eben, Brian, myself went and did an inspection. I guess if you were to imagine what a couple of 20 year old young guys would have for an apartment, it pretty much fit the bill. Um, but aside from being messy, uh, there was not any noticeable you know, damage, holes punched in walls or anything, of, you know, physical stuff like that. Uh, it's, it is a tired apartment. You know, the floors could be redone, probably the carpets ripped up, all the walls could use a good painting, but uh, we've never had a turnover in the apartment. So we've never gone in and done any of those things. It's just always been the same tenants that have uh, rolled over into a new year. Uh, but it was good to, to go do an inspection and at least put them on notice that we were going to come. We did share with them that we would probably have a lease that had some kind of escape clause or wording in there for the historical society if and when they decide they're ready to take over the second floor some kind of notice would be provided and they would have to uh, get it uh, evacuate. Uh, did I miss anything, guys? No, I think that sums it up well. Okay. Um, anybody got any questions? Okay. Uh, Next item that I show is going into executive session unless there's, I've missed anything. Well, uh, I'm gonna take just a second as long as we're about to go. Uh, uh, Lydia Putvain joined our team uh, in the office this week oh. uh, and was off to a great start. Good. So Thank I, you, I see Lydia. Her in, the, in the audience, so I want yep. to. Yeah, I see her now. Congratulate her. Okay, uh, we will. I will entertain a motion going to executive session just for the public. I do not anticipate there'll be any further action done tonight after we get out of executive session. You're more than welcome to stick around, and wait, but uh, if you got better things to do, you might want to go do them. With that, 
Could I, uh, I would entertain a motion at this time. To I move we go into executive session to provide a board update on employee relations as allowed by 1VSA, 313A1. We have motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second, any discussion? All those in favor, same five saying aye. 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 So, those opposed? The ayes have it. Show us at 9.05, entering into executive session. <laughs> <laughs>